So let's talk about, uh, he comes in here, he being Raven, he's going to make the debut. Uh, before we talk about that, you know, I, I hate to just be a brass tax guy here, but I'm going to have to occasionally you have in your perception where someone is going to be. If you were building a football team, you would think, okay, this guy is going to be the guy who can turn our whole franchise around. He will be our Michael Jordan. He will be our Joe Montana. Or he could just be a really good player on the team who makes the squad and helps the team, but maybe we can't necessarily build around him. So I'm not suggesting that perhaps the Raven character coming in, man, he's going to be our next thing. He's going to be our next Hulk Hogan. Uh, we don't like to talk about people that way, Eric, but when you're formatting a show, you have to, you've probably got in your mind's eye, an A talent, a B talent, a C talent. I hate to categorize people that way, but I know this sort of thing has to happen when you're trying to figure out how all these puzzle pieces fit together. What group would you categorize Raven in? If you can't give me a letter or a tier, just throw me some other characters. I saw the Raven character achieving potential like so-and-so or such-and-such. Can you do that? No, I, 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 I do think in, of characters in, a, in terms of A stories and B stories and C stories. There you go. And D stories. Um, Raven was a solid C-level player, B level player potentially but again put yourself in my shoes or anybody's shoes who's making a decision at that point in time what do we do with this character how do i see do i see this character as an a character or b character or c character c level whatever um you know you've got to work with the information and the knowledge you have at your fingertips and what knowledge and information did I have at that time when we were considering, or I was considering bringing Scotty in, or how did I see him once I made that decision? Right. He was in WCW. Eh. He was in WWE. Eh. He was in ECW. Made a lot of noise, but not really. Same thing. Eh. And now I got a chance to bring him in here. What, what would it take for me to look at somebody who's been floating around and has had several pretty high profile opportunities, just never quite made it. Didn't break through for whatever reason, his fault, other people's fault, doesn't matter. He's never, he's never broken through. So what is the audience's perception of him? Probably close to the same as mine. Talented guy, fun to watch, interesting character, but the audience know he's never knows he's never broken through. He's never cracked that mid level border, I guess, whatever you want to call it. He's never broken ceiling. through. Yeah. So why would anybody think that I would look at him? and see something different than what the audience has been experiencing for quite some time. And it's not a knock on Scotty. It's, and I know, you know, cause I have been honest and just blunt. I didn't like the character. Doesn't mean I didn't like the guy. Right. Doesn't mean I didn't think the guy had a lot of talent. I just didn't feel that that character as it was being presented to me and to others was a, a level meaning you know, main event potential, multiple main event pay-per-views per year. I didn't see him fitting into that category based on his body of work and previous success. Now, listen, I, I understand you're saying he couldn't break through sort of the middle of the pack is the way you were describing it, maybe. But he was in the main event of the ECW show. He was there. I mean, who cares? That is, you know, we have, I have, I promote a wrestling match here in Cody, Wyoming, and 500 people show up at an auditorium, and I make myself a world heavyweight champion. Who the fuck cares? Well, no, well, I'm with you, but my point is a smart mind in the business, and Paul Heyman saw value in this character. And when he put his product out there, and maybe it wasn't, super substantial, but once upon a time, WCW now 97, that's different. 
Once upon a time, the house show business for WCW was not what anyone would call very substantial either, but you still had sting on top. If sting was on top when things were bad, sting was on top when things were good. It's not mm. necessarily always up to the guy, right? So some of this is just a function of the system he was in didn't have national television, didn't have these big resources, but if he had perhaps created a character that a smart mind like Paul Heyman thought, man, he could be our featured guy. He could be in the main event. That's got to make you think, well, with the right resources, with the right platform, maybe, or do you not think that's the way it works? It's not the way it worked for me. Okay. Paul Heyman, Paul Heyman is a brilliant guy. Let's just get that off the table. No, there's not many people that I respect as much as Paul Heyman when in, in the wrestling business. Um, that said, Paul Heyman saw that Raven was the right guy for Paul Heyman's audience at that time. Paul Heyman's audience at that time was had nothing to do with WCW's audience or its target audience at that time. It, it, it's like it's like going to a record label, and this is a bad analogy because I don't know fuck all about the music business, but because somebody happens to be a, 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 an up-and-coming country artist doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be able to be a pop artist, right? I mean, they are two different audiences. Paul Heyman was playing to a very violent, holy shit, you know, the type of an audience that were looking for blood, gore, and extreme levels of violence that they couldn't get in any other form of television and the characters that liked to play them, right? That's what Paul was doing. It didn't fit WCW. There was nothing commercial about it. There was nothing. <laughs> there are two different products. So while Paul saw all this potential in that particular character for his particular audience, doesn't necessarily mean that it would translate. Do you think in hindsight, Raven's run in WCW was doomed from the start just because you weren't sold on it, whether it was ECW or the character or I guess what I'm asking is, do you think this character was ever going to get a fair shake? Because it does feel as if you almost you got a fair shake. Look, I had an opinion, but I still hired him. I wanted to be proven wrong. Yeah. I mean, I wanted, I, I hired him hoping that my judgment was wrong. My judgment was I didn't think that, that character was going to work. It, it wasn't big enough. It was so niche. And it was in, the character was ambivalent. It was just a miserable person. Go back and listen to some of those promos. I mean, it's amazing he was able to string some of them together, and I'm not being critical, but they didn't fucking mean anything to anybody other than Scotty. There were two, I, uh, I don't know if this is really true, but I'll use it as an example. They were like so fucking cerebral, they were boring. It you, just, it didn't, it didn't inspire emotion. That wasn't my fault. That well, wasn't well, because I didn't see the character as something bigger than it was. He didn't deliver anything to make me realize I was wrong about him. Did you feel that way about Bray Wyatt's character? Sorry, we just jumped a decade or two here. <laughs> well, uh, you said cerebral, and a lot of people go back to the Bray Wyatt stuff because it is different. It is different. And it was a little more cerebral than some of the other, I don't like you, brother, and this Sunday night. It was a little different than that. It was, it was different, but it was much, you know, the Bray Wyatt stuff was better produced. Sure. And it was more interesting. Scotty Flamingo would go out and sit down, flop down on his ass, leaning up against a guard rail, and just spew some shit that nobody but him understood. It didn't create any emotion. I think Bray Wyatt's stuff, for whatever reason, creates at least in intrigue yeah. and anticipation. And then the execution of that character, it over delivers or delivers on that expectation. Scotty Le Levy didn't neither. It was just poor, miserable fucking me. The world is dark and miserable and I'm dark and miserable. And I'm not really sure why I'm so dark and miserable, but fuck it. I am. All right. That's your character. Go for it. I didn't see it. I just, 
I could, you know, look, if you've got a contrast in your character, if all of a sudden, you know, Scotty came out and he was this miserable, dark, whatever the, I don't even know how to characterize that character. Um, but whatever it was, the angst. Grunge. I mean, I've always thought it was a grunge character born out of the Nirvana era of great. Music. Now, where does it go? So if you've, if that's a big part of your persona and you, you, you're wearing it, you're dressing it, right. You're, 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 you're living that character and you're deep and you're dark and you're cerebral and people have a hard time even really understanding where you're coming from or what you're trying to say, but then you shift gears and get super aggressive and badass and violent. So if there's like a direct contrast between the two characters and I can anticipate or try to anticipate when I'm going to see that other character come out, you know, that is actually a badass. But when all I see is this fucking depressed, morose motherfucker, I don't care. I don't want to watch you. I'll go talk to my neighbor who's got bill collectors chasing him down. I don't, I, I don't need to be miserable in my spare time. All righty. Uh, God, why do I get so? Why do I get so excited about this shit? I don't know why. Well, I, I just think it's interesting that I mean, you bring the guy in and then basically just tell us uh, often here. Didn't like it. Didn't have confidence in it. Didn't dig it. Didn't think. But it but but Connor, why is this so hard to understand? I and I'm seriously, I'm not debating it here, but. If you if you can imagine putting yourself in my position where you've got to satisfy at that time I don't know five six seven million people a week yeah um, and you know that not everybody likes everything you like would you not try things that you didn't necessarily like or I, think will work hoping that you're wrong sure but if you go into it sort of half assed I didn't no. go into it half assed we gave him a lot of opportunity he got a lot of TV time he got a fucking shit ton of mic time to try to get that character over. It wasn't like he wasn't given an opportunity and we hired him and said, okay, now just stay in a locker room till we call you out and go out there and do a job for somebody. We gave him a lot of time and, and built flocks around him and every other damn thing he wanted to do. It just didn't get over. Not because I didn't like it. It just didn't get over.